Hello friends, welcome to How to Valent channel. This is DB Valent stream. Today in this video, we are going to see how to create an Oracle database using silent mode in DBCA. Let's get started. This will be a real quick video. All right. If you see here, I am referring to this blog for my video. So Oracle 19C DB creation using DBC in silent mode. I'll be updating my video or content also into this blog. Alright. So the command for creating the database using silent mode is this DBCA silent create database template and we are using new database template. There are other options like generic per general purpose and data warehouse and so on. The new database template is nothing but it's a very blank template versus the general purpose and the data warehouse by default are actually a real database they get restored when you actually create the database they will be very quick compared to this new database which will based on your laptop uh, CPU and uh, storage type it may take anywhere between uh, 5 to 30 minutes time okay so this is the command I'm actually going to create uh, two databases one on version 12.2 and the other version and, and the other one in 19c Anyway, this is the same command, be it 12.2 or 19c, the instruction is the same. So I'm going to show you only for 12.2 and it applies for 19c as well. So stay with me. So the command starts with DBCA, which is Database Creation Assistant. And we are saying I need the database to be created in silent mode. And this is a really a create data, database state. DBCA has several other options as well. So it can perform several other management tasks. DBCA can also drop the database. I think DBCA means database configuration assistant, I guess. So it can drop the database. It can create the database. It can actually ins add additional components in the database. And it can, it can migrate database from one Oracle home to the other Oracle home. You, you get plan you got several operations possible using DBCA. And the template that I will be using is new database.dbt. And I'll show you what are the other templates available shortly. This is the name of your database. And this global database name is the name of the database that we wanted to uh, name our database after. And this is SID. This global database name has a length restriction and it's eight characters. And then uh, SID is the Oracle instance name. So you can have the database name different from the SID, but normally DBS don't do it. They name the instance after the database name. And response file. If at all you want to add any response file, you can add it here. So by default, uh, we are going to use the existing database template, which is new database. So we're mentioning no values for it. And the passwords for the database. And create as container. Do you want to create this database as a multi-tenant database? And we're saying false reason. Um, Oracle has a long way to go with the containerization. Even with the latest 19C product, many companies stay away from containerization because Oracle came into this multi-tenancy from 12.1, 12.102. But if you look at Microsoft SQL or Postgres, they have uh, their roots in multi I mean multi-tenancy or containers. So it's it, there is a long way Oracle has to catch up. So the 23C, Oracle has to promise that there will be very less issues with multi-tenancy. And uh, the Oracle has had a lot of features with multi-tenancy, but still not many uses this in enterprise. So I'm also deferring for now that I don't want to choose containerization, but it's possible that you migrate from standalone architecture to do uh, containerization architecture later. That we will do it as a separate video, but for now, for me, for my exercise, I don't need containerization. So I'm saying this is false. Database type, multipurpose, but one just call out. Oracle is deprecating container, I mean, standalone feature from 23C. I mean, even from 21C, it doesn't support standalone feature. You need to be in container version. You need to have multi tenancy. So that's a de facto. You have no other choice. So. Okay, the database type is multipurpose. Automatic memory management falls. AMM again is a 11 to new feature and it was not so 
not so popular because both SG and PGA can shrink and resize and, and there are memory resize operations are possible between SG and PGA but it's not good as well but again based on how you implement you may have a different opinion I do not have a good imp impression about AMO so I, I never use it I always go with SG and PGA even my oracle support says if your memory footprint is anywhere above 100 GB you do not use AMO AMM for small database is okay, but any database which is of larger in footprint and you have a memory footprint of so high huge value more than 100 GB or so go with SGA and you need to have huge pages option enabled alright and then total memory I'm allocating for this is 2000 which is actually in MB so 2 GB I'm allocating and how Oracle will split is 1500 MB for SGA and 500 MB for PGA because I have already done this exercise I know and you, if you look at the blog you will know and I'm actually not using AASM here, I'm pushing this to FS and data file destination is Vora data and uh, I wanted, this is very important, okay, use OMF it's very good feature, use Oracle OMF feature because if you use start using it, Oracle is able to manage the files on its own it knows, it knows its format, it knows its, how it implements it, it knows its signature so better use OMF, otherwise you have a lot of uh, um, challenges in after setting up the database throughout its life you will have challenges without OMF so you use OMF read log size 50 MB I put but for a real production usage 50 MB is very minimal so decide which value you want to keep EM configuration I don't want any um, EM express edition or anything for my database so I prefer to defer it here because otherwise you will have some additional memory and uh, computer resources taken away by the EM configuration and you will have additional configurations to make I don't want to do that if at all you want to configure monitoring you can use Grafana or any other tool on top of it but OEM is the best tool Enterprise Manager is the best tool for Oracle monitoring because it comes by default pre-shipped uh, with all the metric targets and threshold defined in Oracle All right, this is the important piece Oracle has lot of features Oracle makes it itself distinguished or unique in this set only Oracle supplies you OMS, Java server and spatial, multimedia, Oracle text all these have dependency among each other but Oracle as a product stands unique only because of these components and if at all your company is using these components install them in your database if you are not using them please 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 don't install these options because it will be a nightmare to manage them during the upgrade your upgrade will run very long with Oracle Apex installed if you have by, me, by chance by mistake if you had installed Oracle Apex you had to deinstall it before the upgrade Oracle even recommends it and then after the upgrade you have to install it if at all you need it otherwise the upgrade will go for a long run Oracle's recommendation for optimizing the upgrade is to remove Oracle Apex imagine their product it is and they say this this is the recommendation but it's it's obvious and it's valid too because I have tried it even removal and addition of Oracle Apex takes a lot of time but it's a, it's a very wonderful feature but if it, yeah, you are using then keep the component otherwise don't keep database vault so I actually diff disable all these products I only need database components which are database packages procedures and views and which are and then the oracles default uh, four components only I need XML database and XTK and then two more components that's the, com the basic components only I need nothing more than that and then the block size character set NLS character set okay the important parameters which you need to pay attention when you create a database are these three block size of the database character set and NLS character set these three are very important after once you create the database you cannot change these parameters if you want to change this parameter you have to recreate the database imagine you have no choice you have to recreate the database you can change the name of the database through NID utility but you can never change the database block size or character set or NLS character set always I would recommend you go with the AL32 UTF-8 character set because it accommodates most of the known language sets available in the world alright 
so it's the same command I just changed the name of the DB that's all okay I think uh, we had uh, enough explanation I only mentioned about this uh, template name right I'll show you so, okay this is 12.2 version my 12.2 version putty alright and I'll show you my 19c 19c is this home okay and you see this I already have TGT 040 but I'm going to set up 050 now alright so this is 19c home this is 12.2.1 home okay if I show you the version you know this 12.2.1 is 19.3 okay let's get started I'll fire this command before I fire I'll show you this which I mentioned about the templates which all templates are available by default assistance dbca templates if you see here new database is the one we are choosing by default it will look into the templates when you mention that it is a template you have to keep your templates here alright new database and data warehouse and general purpose database I already created one template for my own purpose but I'm not going to use it now so just be aware okay so let's run this command here it will take like I said uh, some some long time as my laptop is not so good alright let's do this in 19c home and I'll show you the same template available here as well in 19c you see here new database template general purpose general purpose and data warehouse alright let's do the 19c creation as well database in 19c as well all right um, you see here two percentage three percentage four percentage it's gonna take some time I'll pass the video here and I'll show you at the end of the database creation and during the verification okay if you see here I got a warning saying database name GG TGT 05T may have a potential conflict with an existing database on the system so choose a different name it says so that's true I have this database already running so I cannot use it anyway so I'll wait for some time to finish this and I'll show you okay so the database creation completed if you can see here it started here went on and then completed database creation completing so executing post configuration action 100% is complete this is the log file we need to look at it and I'll show you how did we perform so it uh, started at around 14.02 and it finished around 14.32 and which means at 30 minutes like I said 5 to 30 minutes time database name ggsrc 050 and uh, SID is ggsrc 050 ok how did we perform in the 19c so it's the same case Okay, we started. You see here it's a jump start of 10% in the beginning. I don't know why 19c reports like this. So finally, it completed 100% 006s. Like I mentioned, there was a conflict in name, so I created a new database. So let's see. 1404 it started. It started, finished at 1440. So the, mm, I think 4 minutes extra this machines are of same configuration guys so run on the same s file system everything is same so performance metrics are same just that the 19c took 4 minutes extra compared to the 12.2 so so then let's write down the duration it took 30 minutes for the db creation at the same time 19c 34 minutes for the DB creation let's verify how the DB was created alright so right, 
let's uh, just get started okay so we got the database created let's see if our database is there in the um, etc on our tab okay it's there we have set the database let's see how the database is created now let's do some basic checks only I'll skip the checks in 19C because it's going to be the same set of tasks and you will really very well see this in the blog content as well whatever checks we make here alright so is all the registry governance valid? yes then we verify the data file health alright so basic health looks good have we enabled archaeolog mode? No, by default it will not be enabled. I mean, we, if you enable it, it will enable, but we didn't enable. And the components, it's a very important one we spoke about. Uh, what all we said? Character set, block size. We said two important ones, and then uh, on top of it, we also. Let's go back. Uh, whatever we set, uh, we need to verify it's there. So, database name. Yes, it's meeting. Let's check the instance name. Yeah, it's an instance name is also matching. All right, let's see. Instance name is matching either, and then container database is false. Let's verify if container database is false. Yep, container database is no, so it's set to false. So it's set to no. Automatic memory management false. All right. memory target is zero so automatic memory management is set to false and it's zero and how is the memory split up you see here sj max size 1504 mb sj target 1504 mb and how is the pga set pga 500 mb like you mentioned alright pga aggregate limit is always four times the pga aggregate target so it's 2 gb but it's the virtual limit don't worry about this now i mean virtual limit but it's a hard limit Alright, we mentioned uh, the database file system type is FS. So let's see if the file system, if you have chosen file system. All our data files are residing in the file system or not? Let's see. Yes, all our data are residing on a file system. See, it's a very proper naming convention. You see here. Or a data ggsr 5 t data file. This is very important because unless you mentioned my database to be created as OMF, you will never see this classification or segregation data file. For read log, you will see online log. You see here, the segregation will not be there. If you use a if that we use OMF is set to no, you will not see this online log and data file. They will all be sitting reside sitting inside this directory in one single shot. And I'll show you control file. Huh? Let's see here, it's control file. So it's using a proper OMF format. You see the names MF, MF, MF. Okay, it's managed files. So anyway. Uh, our data files and everything is set properly as we requested OMF true. Now size of the read log is 50 MB. Is it really the case? Yep, it's 50 MB. All right. EM configuration yes. So now the next thing we need to verify is the component list. Let's verify. So let's see. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 
you can see here only four components we don't need anything more oracle database catalog views packages and types workspace manager xml database these are mandatory database components you cannot skip them this is what you need for a basic startup database on top of it whatever you need you can decide but it's up to you to decide it's your policy if you want to rely on oracle you can use oracle's features or components if not you can design your own component there are a lot of open source options available now the next thing which comes is the important parameter which is block size 8192 okay and character set so all right so to check the character set we need to use two views one nls okay we dollar nls parameters okay so right <coughs> value for v dollar parameter so we dollar nls parameters mm, i'm not gonna restrict any you can just take a look all the parameters nls character set yes you see here al30 ttf8 and nls nchar nchar character set al16 etf16 these are the two characters that we decided but this is nls let's look at how what is the value of nls database parameters so this parameter you can alter them in the life of the database but it doesn't it doesn't change the database character this is the database character okay really database setting nls database parameters all right so all right if you see here nls character set is l30 ttf8 nls nchar character set is l16 ttf16 all right so this is what uh, we gave so we have seen all of them properly created as we requested and uh, the size of the db let's see how huge it is the st yeah, startup database how much it occupies all right 1.4 gb and all our data files are residing in one location which is ggsrc one point seven GB oh, sorry one point six GB because we have a control file read log and temp file also is there right we didn't check the temp file yeah let's check the temp file it also will be using the OMF formatter you see here it's uh, sitting within the data file directory but it's a data file temp file and you see the name it's ending with the dot TMP and it's a temp file not data file you see this this is a data file so they are ending with the dot DBF but the temp file is ending with the .emp to indicate it's a temp file all right there is a difference between a temp file and data file temp file can shrink but data file cannot uh, unless you do a reorg okay so all right so i hope uh, i made sense let me just check uh, if i made uh, all the points i want to make sure yep if i have shared with you whatever i wanted to I hope you really like, like this video. If you like, please do share and subscribe to my channel. And feel, please feel free to ch share your comments so I can improvise on my audio quality or uh, the way we I share the information if you want. And if you have any questions or uh, concerns with the content, please do feel free to make a comment. I, I'm very happy to take it up. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And again, welcome to Hope to Build in Channel. And uh, thanks for staying with me until now. Thank you. Bye.